morning. Um, welcome to the Vermont House Human Services Committee. And it is Tuesday, uh, March 23rd. Uh, and uh, we are uh, having a um, presentation from, uh, from Katie McClinn from Legislative Council uh, on what the final resolution um, of, the, of what the amendment to H-171 is. And this, will, this is the amendment that um, appropriations um, will be presenting. Um, it'll be appropriations amendment. We'll be talking about it on the floor, um, but we need to have a straw poll. We talked about it in general on Friday um, without the benefit of legislative council. And you all, um, for, post, for folks listening, it is on our webpage um, and committee members, it's on our webpage and Katie can, um, go through it for us now. Good morning. Katie Good morning. McGlynn, Office of Legislative Council. Let me pull up the screen. Are you seeing Committee on Appropriations mm -hmm. up at the line too? Great. Okay, um, so I will run us through this amendment. What I might do is try to highlight what is the same as your underlying version and kind of skip over those sections and then try to highlight the changes. So the section one um, is legislative intent that has not changed. That is the same as your underlying um, language. Section two um, and three, well, let me start with section two. Section two is the child care financial assistance program. If you remember, this is where we flip to a family benefit versus a per child benefit. And this is where um, there's no longer a copay for people, for families under 150% of FPL um, and where the upper limit um, of the program is now up to 350% of current FPL. This language is all the same. This hasn't changed since the committee worked on this. In section three, this was language, um, it still pertains to the CCFAP program, but this is language about um, how payments to providers is calculated. This is mostly the same. Um, there had been a sentence in subdivision C1, um, not a sentence, there had been a, a second clause on line 10 um, that referred to updating the market rate survey. Um, with with frequency and um, having the payment to providers keep up to date with that um, every time the market rate survey was updated. So that language has been gone. And now on lines um, eight to nine, the language had been the payment shall schedule, sorry, the payment schedule established by the commissioner may reimburse providers in accordance with the market rate survey. The previous version um, said shall reimburse providers. So this is kind of taken a step back there and now it's um, not required, but permitted. Katie, Representative Small has a question. Sure. Katie, small question. When we use uh, the language of results from the most recent Vermont Child Care Market Survey, are we not asking them to update it or is it just implied that if it's the most recent, it would be updated? Let me read this. Hmm, I see your point. Let me look at the exact language that was cut to be able to answer that. Here's the as proved human services version. So the language that was cut after um, Vermont Child Care Market Rate Survey, the clause was and be adjusted following the release of each new Vermont child care market rate survey. So this language is saying um, in accordance with the most recent results and then the new language was, and every time there is a new result that we're making that adjustment following the release of each new survey. Um, I, do, I do take your point though, that it almost, seems that that second clause wasn't necessary because we're still saying the most recent survey in lines 10, nine to 10. Am I understanding your point there? 
Yes, just clarifying that our language previously wasn't instructing to update and that this is still in line with the original intent. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like that. That is not what you were sharing, Katie. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, in subdivision C2, there was also another reference to the market rate survey. And I think as we discussed earlier that it was a second clause of the first sentence um, that that language was duplicative to what we had in C1. So that language was struck. So that is another change. Um, section four is the appropriation for sections two and three for the CCFAP program. And that language has not changed since the human services version. Is that, uh, nope, there has been a change, I'm sorry. So um, in subdivision, excuse me, subsection B, the intent of the General Assembly, subdivision two, previously we had language um, that this um, subdivision two would take effect on fiscal year, by fiscal year 2023, and that date has been updated to October 1st, 2021 as the money, the funds would be available um, sooner than the fiscal year 2023 date. And there had been a third item in this legislative intent list. And that was um, that by fiscal year 2026, a family shall spend not more than 10% of the family's gross annual income on childcare. And that language has been removed. Section five, um, there's also a change. I can't remember if I, walked through um, with this committee. So first, the, the version that came out of human services in subsection A had an appropriation for the Bright Futures information system. <clears throat> and then another version that I think you looked at on Friday, I can't remember, had um, like an approval, uh, was that subsection seven? Hold that thought, I'm sorry. So section A had an appropriation and that language of the appropriation has been um, move to the technology modernization reserve. So the appropriation itself doesn't go away. It just means it's not particularly addressed in this bill. Instead, it says funds for the modernization of the Bright Futures information system are located within the technology modernization re reserve. So we're just cross-referencing that that appropriation sort of lives somewhere else right now. Um, and then subsection uh, B has not changed since the committee worked on it. Section six is the workforce supports. This has not changed since the committee looked at it. This is the three programs. I'm gonna scroll through this and I'll get to section seven. This is where I was going before. I was getting my section five and my section seven confused. So um, a previous version that I think you looked at on Friday morning had language about um, a process set up with joint fiscal um, determining the right source of funding to use um, for the appropriations related to the workforce development programs, that process, the language around that process has been removed from this version of the bill. So instead, what you see here is just the appropriation for the bill. What you will see at the very end of this version of the amendment is a new section that says, um, basically, um, we're going to use federal funds, but if we find out actually these programs aren't eligible for federal funds, we're going to use general fund to fund these programs. So um, that's a piece we'll, we'll look at. I think it's section 15 um, off the top of my head. But otherwise the appropriations have remained the same. Uh, Katie, there's a question from Teresa. Uh, Katie just said what I was just going to point out to committee members that everything here remained the same to our original <laughs> to our original thing. So all set. Thank you. Um, good. Thank you. So subsection B, this is the same. This is the um, end user group. Is that right? Yes, this is the end. No, this is not the end user group. This is the report back on the effectiveness of the three programs. Um, prior to the two of them um, being repealed. So evaluating the effectiveness and recommending whether the program should go on um, or be repealed as they are in this bill. Um, so that language is the same, that has not changed. Section eight is the repeals of the um, workforce programs. These sections have not changed. 
Next, we have a new section. This is the Building Bright Futures Powers and Duties. And I believe the committee did see at least a version of this um, on Friday. Um, so basically what happened is um, in the version that the committee passed out, there was a temporary um, advisory group that was going to be hosted by a subset of Building Bright Futures. And um, as part of setting up those responsibilities, there was a lot of focus on um, bright, Building Bright Futures, looking at the administration and operation of the childcare system. Since that advisory group is no longer part of this amendment, this there's language being added in statute to the ongoing responsibilities of the Building Bright Futures Council um, with regard to try to pick up that responsibility. So it's part of their ongoing responsibility. So um, this is a list of powers and responsibilities of the group. And to current, under current law, this group is to advise the administration and the General Assembly on, and we have subdivision A is existing law, what they're um, advising the administration and General Assembly on. And I've added a new subdivision B that they're also providing advice on planning related to the administration and operation of Vermont's child care system. In addition, um, and under existing law, this group is responsible to develop an early care health and education system plan. And now we've added new language, which shall reflect the growing diversity of Vermont's children and families. And also in the work you did in the testimony that you took, um, you heard from the business community of wanting to be include in, included in these conversations. So now in um, codified law, we have a reference to the business committee community. So um, Building Bright Futures is responsible to convene members of the child care community, medical community, education community, and now business community and other organizations um, to ensure that families receive high quality excuse me, quality services in the most efficient and cost-effective manner. So that's the new language in the um, Bright Futures responsibilities and duties. And then we have a new section 10. Um, and this is maybe different from what we looked at on Friday. So this, um, the, there are federal funds coming in through the American Rescue Plan Act um, that can be used for childcare. I believe the version that this committee saw on Friday was only um, one section and one group that was being created to look at how the funding could be used the, under the federal law and to determine um, what purposes the state could use these funds for. So that one group has kind of been split apart into two groups. Um, and they sort of have the same focus, the Section 10 group is looking at the child care development block grant funds that are coming in through the American Rescue Plan Act. And then in section 11, the group is looking at um, the child care uh, stabilization grant funds. Let me make sure of that correct. Um, yeah, child care stabilization grants that are also coming in through the American Rescue Plan Act. So we've just divided that group up and they have sort of a different focus. They're looking at different funds, but also they have sort of different charges. They're both providing recommendations, but the way they go about doing that and when the money can be spent is different. So um, this first group, we have that DCF in coordination with Building Bright Futures is to convene a childcare working group composed of mutually agreed to stakeholders that reflect the growing diversity of Vermont's children and families including individuals who are black, indigenous, and persons of color. And that members of this group shall include rep a representative from both this committee and Senate Health and Welfare, as well as, as well as individuals representing families, child care and after school providers, the business community, child welfare advocates, and consultation with any other individuals necessary to make recommendations for most effectively utilizing the Child Care Development Block Grant Fund received by the state under the federal law to meet the immediate and future child care needs of Vermonters. In subsection B, this is the powers and duties of the group. So the group is to make recommendations to the General Assembly to ensure that the pot of money that it's looking at that's coming in through the federal laws 
fully utilized. And the group is to consider the following priorities, but it doesn't have to be limited to only looking at these priorities. Um, so this is a list I believe the committee looked at um, on Friday and this list hasn't changed, but I'll go through it again. Um, in subdivision one, funding necessary to ensure that the copay for a family participating in CCFAP shall not exceed 10% of a family's annual gross income. Subdivision two, expanding CCFAP to families whose incomes are up to 400% of current FPL. Three, funding necessary to complete child care and early child care education systems analysis and financing studies that were going, that were part of your original um, bill in sections 13 and 14 of this amendment. Uh, funding necessary to implement the workforce supports that are in this bill, increased access to high quality infant care, access to high quality affordable child care for culturally and racially diverse families, support and assistance to stabilize regulated privately operated um, center based programs and family child care homes and identification of any statutory or regulatory barriers in using the federal funds to address the immediate and future child care needs of Vermonters. So an earlier version you looked at had a report coming back April 30th and then another report coming back November 30th. The April 30th report back is gone. And the language here is that by November 30th, DCF is to submit a written report um, to the appropriations committees and policies committees containing the work group's recommendations. And then in terms of meetings, we have um, the commissioner and executive director of Building Bright Futures are calling the first meeting and serving as co-chairs. Um, the membership, majority of the membership constitutes a quorum and the work, working group ceases to exist on December 1st of this year. So that's the first of these two groups looking at federal funding. The second of the two groups is looking at the child care stabilization grants, as I said earlier. And this intro language is a little bit different. We still have DCF working in coordination with Building Bright Futures to convene the group of mutually agreed to stakeholders. Um, and the stakeholders are to reflect the growing diversity of Vermont's children and families. The members of the working group, um, like the group before it, are to include a representative of this committee and Senate Health and Welfare. Um, but the other stakeholders, it's a little bit more, more narrow. So we have child care and after school providers in consultation with other individuals, but we don't have a representative of families or the business community or child uh, health and, uh, excuse me, child welfare here. Um, and we have this group looking to make a recommendation to most effectively utilize the child care stabilization grant funding um, received under the federal act um, to meet the immediate and future needs of child care needs of Vermonters. In terms of responsibility, we have this group making recommendations to ensure that the use of this federal pot of money is fully utilized in a timely manner. This, the spending of this money is more time sensitive is my understanding um, speaking to Sarah Truckle from the um, Department for Children and Families. And then we have language about uh, a report coming and also approval for spending this money. So by September 1st, the department is to submit a written report to the Joint Fiscal Committee and to the chairs of this committee and health and welfare containing the working group's recommendations. Upon receipt of this report, Joint Fiscal is, um, has five days to approve or reject the work group's recommendations. If the committee, the Joint Fiscal Committee does not act within the five days, the recommendation is deemed approved and the department shall distribute the funds according to the recommendations. And if the Joint Fiscal Committee rejects the recommendations within the five day window, it shall hold a meeting as soon as possible to receive testimony from the department. Um, and then similar to the other working group, we have the commissioner of DCF, executive director of Building Bright Future serving as co-chairs. Um, and then this working group shall cease to exist on January 1, 2022. In terms of studies and reports, section 12 is what we were calling um, the, I, I guess the mini study when it was moving through human services. It had two parts when it was moving through human services. It had um, uh, also a, a look at co-pays 
And so this version is only looking at the enrollment based model versus the attendant based model. Section 13 um, is the systems analysis. Section 14 is the financing study. Um, these sections have been um, kind of truncated. They're a little bit um, shorter than the versions that were in your underlying amendment that came out of the committee. Um, but in substance, they should remain the same. I believe I walked through these on Friday. Um, and if that memory is correct, then these are both the same um, as you saw on Friday. So I might just scroll past them for now, if that's okay. Um, and then the section 15 language that I referenced before um, with regard to um, how we're funding the workforce programs. This is kind of what I was referencing before. So in section 15, we have language that to the extent the appropriation in the act is made from federal funds provided under the American Rescue Plan, um, including state holding funds that are established out as a result of the federal act, the commissioner of finance and management is authorized to make expenditures in anticipation of receipts as necessary. And in the event the money is received by the state under the federal act cannot be used for their designated purpose, appropriation shall instead be made from the general fund. So this is saying that those programs will be funded either way, either through the using the federal um, American Rescue Plan Act money or by the general fund. And the, the preference is given to using the federal funds if possible. And if not, the fallback is general funds. Um, and then this allows carry forward from fiscal year 2021. The effective dates um, should look familiar. Um, we had a technical fix on line 17, changing October 1, 2022 to October 1, 2021, um, which was an error in the underlying um, committee report. And then the other change is just to reflect the fact that sections 10 and 11, which are the two working groups that are looking at the um, funding coming through the American Rescue Plan Act, um, need to take effect right away. So we're having those take effect on passage. And that's it. Thank, uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, Representative Brumstead. Thank you. Um, Katie, just a quick question about section 10 and 11. Um, so the, the Amer we're, we're looking on those two studies. The first study, the one that has to do with the Child Care Development Block Grant has all the specific things we want the committee to look at. But the second one, the child care stabilization grants, did, doesn't have all those specific. Is that because they don't have to look at those issues? Maybe that's a Teresa question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Representative Brumstead. Um, when we put the amendment together, um, they were all part of one group. Yeah. Um, DCF wanted to separate them out because they have different timelines associated with them. And the, um, and uh, frankly, uh, we weren't part of developing the second piece. <laughs> okay, so they really, I just wanna be sure if I, today even get that question. I noticed that last night, I was like, oh, it's only in one section, not the other section. Yes, no, it, it, and there are different rules, there are different guidelines um, for how each, each um, set of grants can be used. Um, and that's the purpose of the work group. So um, we'll be able to have influence in those work groups since we will have a rep there. Okay, and then lastly, on that same two points, do we think that the same people will be in those same two groups or they'll be different? No, they'll be different. Okay, thank you. Other questions? I just wanted to clarify, Madam Chair, I said they'll be different, but there will be crossover between the two. For instance, you know, the people from DCF will be the same and likely the reps from the House and the Senate will be the same. I just want to. Um, the, the, the purpose of the two groups is a little different and the expertise that is needed will undoubtedly be different. And um, we're, we're, we're trying to go on a new path, which is not being totally prescriptive, which is hard for me, but we are trying to um, uh, do that. Um, 
if there are no further questions, um, I would entertain a, um, a straw, well, I, um, why don't we uh, <coughs> have a straw poll? And um, I no longer see Dan here. <coughs> so um, uh, why don't we, I'm, I'm, I can't hear you, Teresa. I was just thinking we could just raise our hands. I was gonna say, um, I'm, I learned from other committees, we can just raise our hands. Um, um, uh, Representative Gregoire, are you raising your hand or do you have a question? <laughs> You're raising your hand. Okay, so all those who on a straw poll um, uh, support um, the Appropriations Committee um, amendment to H-171, please let me know. Me, I'm up there too. Um, all those, um, uh, please, please uh, put your hands down. Um, represent my hand function isn't working this morning. So I was raising my hand for the first option, but it okay. didn't work. <laughs> I wasn't looking at you. I was looking at some other members who were slower to take their hand down. Um, and all those who, um, who do not support the amendment, the Appropriations Committee amendment. Okay. Um, so with, with toppers, um, with Representative McFawn's uh, text to me, which says that um, upon reading that he supports it um, right now. Um, um, we have we have a vote of ten, and being that this is a straw poll and not a formal poll, um, uh, assuming that we see Dan before tomorrow, uh, when he has when um, or even this afternoon, if people ask on the floor, we will add that because it's not a formal vote. Um, so um, thank you all for your hard work on this. And I will see you this afternoon. If we are off the floor, that's probably, I'll probably see you on the floor and tomorrow. Um, but um, if we are um, off the floor, let's say by uh, th uh, 345, um, we will um, come back. But otherwise, um, I'll see you tomorrow. And I believe we're supposed to be on the floor right now. So this. Um, Thank you.